All right. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to this impromptu session. I just thought I'd had a little bit of spare time, so I thought I would um, have a call with you guys. Um, please do keep the questions coming. Uh, there were some lots of uh, questions in the chat, which is great. Um, one of the big things was about local storage, which I'm very happy to go over. Um, the other was um, HTML in functions and arrays of objects. And what else was there? There was linking of JS files. Um, and yeah, more about local storage. All right. So um, what I thought I could do is maybe we could just look at some basics and then there was a suggestion for a to-do list. So I think that would be a good example of local storage. Um, so let's just start off. I've got my HTML page here. Let me zoom in. Let me keep the chat open here so I can see any questions. Um, hopefully it's an interactive session. So if you don't understand something, ask a question about it. Um, so I've got an HTML page. I'll just open this in my browser. Um, and I'm going to link to a script tag. Let me just open the console. And let me make a folder, let's say this, and let me link to that. Right. So the first thing I wanted to go over is functions. Um, can everyone see your right? Is that everything okay? I go a little bit zoomed in, it just makes it a little bit hard, but hopefully it's easier to see. Um, all right, so let's take a look at functions. The way that I've explained functions in the past, and I think it's a helpful way of understanding it, is it's reusable code. So if we want to be able to perform the same operation multiple times, um, we can use a function to do that. So for example, a calculator is a really good example, right? Because um, the functionality the function of the calculator is the same. No matter who has the calculator, the functionality that that calculator has is unique for that calculator. Um, but it is the user who inputs the numbers uh, that changes what is displayed by the calculator. Okay, so the same thing happens with our function, right? So we can have a function, let's just call it greeting. Now, what we could do is we could, let's say, create a const here, name equals Sally console.log hello name. And we could call this function, right? Save that, look at our console. Let me zoom in there. We can see hello Sally, but this calculator, if you wish, um, it's got this hard coded, right? So whether my name is Sally or not uh, is irrespective for this function. It's always going to tell me that my name is Sally, but my name isn't Sally. Um, and so we don't declare the variable inside of the function. Instead, what we can use is something called parameters. And parameters are essentially a variable that is local to this function. Okay, so instead of declaring an actual variable like this with a name and a value in this way, what we can do is we can declare the name of the variable or the parameter when um, we create our function. And we can set the value of that variable when we call that function. And now, our function is actually has become dynamic. And we could call the same function multiple times, right? Say that. Now each time it runs, it is dynamic. And that's what we want from our functions. Our functions are enabling us to be able to um, perform the same operation over and over with a um, an outcome that we expect. Um, but the data that gets 
put into that function will change. And it's quite crucial to understand this because especially when we start working with APIs. Um, so what will happen is you don't know the data that's going to be coming through to you, right? So let's say, um, let's say you have an e-commerce store and there's a list of products that you're going to fetch from an API. Um, an API is just a big a way of being able to access data, okay? Um, so instead of having like this hard coded in, um, I would pass in whatever data I've gotten from the API. Um, so I get a list of products. I don't know the names of those products. I don't know if they have a price set. So um, you need to be able to have a function that is adaptable to different types of data, if that makes sense. Um, the data itself will be like the structure will be uh, the same for your API, uh, although every API is different in how it structures it. But doing multiple calls to the same API, you'll still get the same structure. Is that making sense to everyone? Hope I'm not jumping too far ahead about the API, but it's just understanding the dynamism of JavaScript that it's dynamic in what you need to present to the user, right? So like if I need to get an API call to know the name of the user, right? I have to go and check what is user 458? And then the API says to me, oh, that person's name is MJ. Then it can display MJ on the page. Is that making sense for everyone? And drop a chat drop a thing in the chat if you if that's making sense or do you need more of that? Great. Yes, that's making sense. All right. If it's not, then um, do pipe up. Um, okay. So that's kind of like a little bit of a basic on functions. Um, I think the next thing that people wanted was just a little thing about local storage. Um, so the reason that you might want to use local storage, um, let's say a user has a wish list is a good example. Like um, there, it's an e-commerce store and they've clicked heart on a whole bunch of items. Uh, that, that data you don't actually want or need it to be stored on a database on your like business side. Um, you could, I guess. Um, but if you just want it to be stored in that browser for that user, you can use local storage to be able to do that. And the key benefits of local storage is that it allows you to access information across multiple pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this to-do list. Um, what I'll have is, let's say, um, I'm going to have a form, let's say. I'll have an input type text. And I did mention that we'll get to arrays and objects in arrays, and this will be all part of it. Um, and I'll create here, I'll say it's an ID of um, to do, uh, what would you say, title. Okay. I'll just add a placeholder. Um, and then let's have another here, input side equals eight. I'm going into date methods maybe, but let's see how we go here. Um, so I'll save that. And then I'll just have a button type of button. Um, the reason I'm using type of button there is because I don't want it to submit this form. Um, I just want it to uh, be a button that I can hang a click on. So you, you might have gotten feedback before about using anchor tags and buttons and that you shouldn't mix the two up. So an anchor tag takes you to a new page or a new place on a page whereas a button is something that we can hang JavaScript on. So I want to perform an operation on this page and I just need a thing that the user can click and I can then have an event happen on the back of that. And this is my button here. 
and my button is going to say create to do item. Okay. And then underneath here, I'll just have a uh, list, uh, let's say to do list. list. Okay, so there's my HTML. And what I want to happen is that I want um, the user to input uh, the kind of title of their to-do. Um, I want them to give me a date, and then I want them to click a create to-do item. Maybe just, I'm gonna say create item like that, maybe a bit easier. And then once that gets clicked, I'm going to save that item in my local storage, um, and and then going to add it to the HTML page. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add some components here. And I'll add a file for add to storage.js. Um, I'll create another file here. Let's say create html.js and get from storage as well. Let's have that get from storage.js. Okay, so I've created a components folder and, and I've got my script.js over here. Let me empty that. Another change I just need to quickly make is that I need to change the script.js to say type equals module. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can use imports exports. Okay. Um, so let's go over here and let's work on this add to storage. I'm going to create a function called, I'm going to, I'm going to export it. And I'll say function add to storage. Okay. This is a function just like the function that we had before, and it's going to perform an operation. It's going to be our calculator that does a function. And the function that I want this function to do is to add something to local storage. Um, I can just make a note in here that this function takes in an array and adds to storage. Okay. And it's quite important that I'm telling it here, I'm saying here that I'm taking in an array um, because what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to parse that array. So I'm going to say here, uh, I'm going to call it items. And for now, what I can do is I'm going to say local storage dot set item. And let's say it's a list. I'm going to call it list. And I'll add items to it. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go back to script.js and I'm going to import that function. So I'll say import. And it's called add to storage. And now, because I've imported this function, I can do something with it. So I can go here, I can say add to storage. And I'm going to just pass in hello. And now, if I go to storage, so let me just clear my local storage because it will be full of things. Uh, and we'll just run that page again. If you look in local storage, you can see that I now have an item with a key of list and a value of hello. All right. So that's kind of the kind of like basic um, kind of thing of um, local storage. Any questions there in terms of the fact that I've exported this function from add to storage? And I've imported it here, and then I've passed in this string. Drop it in the chat if there is this. The more questions, the better. So um, ask if you're not understanding something or you want some clarity. So um, this is my the argument of my function. Remember, we spoke about kind of parameters and arguments, and that this is the variable name, and this is the variable value. Okay. The one slightly tricky bit is just the fact that the function is living in a different 
file. But what it means is that I can work on this function in isolation, which makes life a little bit easier. Okay, now what I want to do is I actually want to collect the data from here. So let's do that. Um, we need to first select that button. So let me add a um, ID here of uh, to do button. Yep. Uh, let's say to button equals documents dot query selector. So do button. And when to do button gets clicked. Write a function. And as I strongly suggest, um, it's happening. I cannot recommend enough uh, the use of console logs, guys. Um, it's one of the things that I probably say the most in tutoring is asking students to please console log something. Um, if there's one tool that is brilliant, it is the ability to check whether something is happening and to check whether the value of something is what you expect the value of it to be. Often I'll get students who message and they'll say, um, oh, it's, it's just not working. And I say to them, well, what is the value of the variable that you're trying to work with? And they say, I don't know. And the answer is that they should have used a console log to first check what the value of that variable is. And key, also important in that, not just is the value of the variable, but it's the type of variable. When we get onto you working with APIs, it's gonna be critical for you to be able to look and see whether something is an array or if something is an object and knowing how to work with something that is an array and work with something that is an object. Cool. So let's check if that's actually working. Um, how do I click console? Oh, we've got an error. What is our error? Uh, did I not save the HTML page? Thanks very much, William. Great. Uh, he spotted that I have called, I've made it an ID, but I've actually tried to access it as though it was a class. Great spotting. Thank you. Um, all right, let's go back to the console. And now if we click create item, it's happening, gets console logged. Um, Another key of how I'd like you to be seeing also what I'm doing here is I'm slowly, I'm breaking down the problem, right? So if someone says to you, um, please create um, a to-do list uh, where the user can add uh, a list of to-do items and save it in local storage, like that might feel a bit daunting um, and naturally, um, but the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you the problem solving tools to be able to break that problem down into manageable pieces. So start like this is the first piece of our puzzle, right? The first piece of the puzzle, can I have a button that runs a function? And, and you first get that thing working and then you say, okay, well, what's the next thing? Well, the next thing is to go ahead and get this data here. So I can say, um, select these items uh, to do title and to do date. Okay. And we can console log the value there. Great. So I've selected this element and I'm now console logging it. You can see that I've selected that element. I can also console log to do date. 
Now I get those two elements coming through. Okay. Um, but I don't really want to select those whole elements. What I'd actually like to select is what is called, and you can see over here. So um, it's important to understand the DOM and that the DOM is basically a, a way of being able to access the page. And it's kind of how our HTML page is structured and built. It is built like an object. And objects have key value pairs, right? So just like um, local storage, right? Here you can see this literally says key and value. And it is this key value pair relationship that is key to understand about JavaScript and the DOM. And one um, important uh, property is going to be our value. You can see that currently there is no value. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just change this. And I'm going to say, um, get groceries. Okay. And we can see Scroll down. There. So I get this key of value and this property of get groceries. So what I can do now is I can create an object based on this. So I'm going to create an object. I'll say const um, to do item equals. And we're going to create our own object here. And we're going to set, set it to have a title of to do title and a date of to do date. And let's console log the value of this object which we've created to do item. How are we doing, everyone? Any questions so far? Cool, so I'll have get groceries and I'll choose that I want that to happen next Friday. I need to remember to go and get groceries. And I've now created an object. Again, you can see this key value pair. Oh, I actually need to say to do title.value and the same here with the date dot value. Okay, create item. There we are. So now we have our date and our title. Any questions so far on this? Cool. Um, so that means it's making sense. So um, what we can do is we can then go ahead and add this to local storage, right? We have this function that takes in something and adds it to local storage. Um, I said that I'm going to add it as an array, but let's just work with it just being an object for now. That's fine. I just want to show how I'm taking something that has happened in the DOM and I'm adding it into my local storage. So I'm going to hit save on that. For now, let me just take out that comments there. And so we can run the script. Um, let me go to my storage, local storage. That's the lead list. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and create an item. You can see we've come across a bit of a problem here because it says list and object object. Um, and the reason for that is that we need to stringify. Currently, what we're trying to do is we're trying to throw in a JavaScript object, um, but we the browser only works with strings. It doesn't work with JavaScript objects um, in terms of local storage. Um, so what we need to do is we need to stringify it. So we can go here and let's say uh, const um, stringified item equals json dot stringify. We're going to add that to local storage. Okay. I'm going to try and add that again. And now you can actually see that I've got the data of my um, grocery item. The, at the get groceries to do list. Is there any questions on json.stringify or anything else?
Cool. All right. Well, um, message in the chat if they if any thoughts do come up. Uh, what I would like to do is I'm going to um, go here and I'm going to create an array. I'm going to say let's um, yeah, I can call it to do list. Okay, I'm setting it to be an empty array. And what I'm going to do is when uh, a to do list gets to do item gets created, I'm going to say to do list dot push, and I'm going to push into it this to do item. Let's just take a look in the console and see what's happening now to our to do list. So let's look in the console. Um, so I'm going to click get groceries. And now I've got an array that has get groceries and that date. I'm going to say uh, that I have a uh, dance class uh, on Tuesday. Okay, create that. Now suddenly I have an array with get groceries and dance class in it. You can see there those two objects. And it's just going to keep pushing whatever these items are into this array that I have here. Okay. Um, let's say. Sunday. So now I have an array of three items. And what I want is that each time that uh, this to do list gets updated, it actually adds it to local storage. So I'm going to go here to do lists. And I'm going to add it there. Okay. So let me go ahead and look in local storage. What's happening? Clear that. Okay. So we've got Jim, and let's say dance class. And what you can see is that you've got a list, and there's these two objects. Let me try pull it up. Um, and oh, that's what I wanted. I want that. So there's the gym and the dance class. In the there's a question. In the JSON tutorial video, we are explained DOM as a traditional way of sending data to a server. Does that mean DOM is kind of outdated? When do we need JSON besides Stringify? So the DOM is uh, an is termed an API, but what's important to understand about it is it's just the way of structuring um, the page. So let me, I'll just comment this out quick. Uh, and we'll console.log documents, right? So you'll know document.querySelector or document, maybe dot in HTML. Um, so let's just have a look at what happens when we console log documents. We get this HTML document here. And this is built up. So here you can see URL, active element, a link color, right? What this is essentially is it's like this const document equals, and it's an object. So there's a key of URL and a value of a string. Okay, whatever. Uh, another value is the active element, and there uh, is an element of the body, which itself is an object. So there's main body, and so on, right? So you can see there my URL, the active element. Um, there's an a link color of an empty string. So it's built up exactly like this in terms of an object. That's why it's the document object model. And so if we want to be able to uh, change a value, so let's say I wanted to change a link color, I could say document dot a link color equals, will it not allow me to do that? 
Yeah, I can. Well, I mean, you've got it there, so. Um, and I'm going to change it to blue. Now, when the documents gets looked at here, you can now see that I've changed a link color to blue. And that's what's happening uh, with the, the document object model. Remember, we're just using dot notation here, right? So if I if I had another variable, let's say name or person equals, and it's an object name color. That's me. Okay. Is a, right. If I wanted to be able to access one of these properties, say person dot name. And then I get that property. I can also change that. So I could say person.name. Then that comes through in the console. Okay. Then you asked about JSON. So JSON is a way of being able to structure um, our. Uh, arrays and objects and data. It's just a way of being able to structure data in a consistent way. Um, one of the key differences of, I say, a normal object to JSON is the fact that JSON uh, wants the keys uh, inside quotation marks. You could have it as double quotation marks as well. Um, but essentially, it's uh, it's just a way of being able to formulate uh, data. So when we make a call to an API, it's going to send back JSON. So what JSON.stringify is doing is it's taking in JavaScript and what it's outputting is a string, right? So it takes in, say, uh, like an object like this, name, Forty-three, and what it outputs is a string like this. Like that. Does that make sense about what JSON dot stringify is doing? If not, drop a thing in the chat. If there's more questions, I'm very happy to take them. So, um, cool, that was a nice one. Um, right, I'm gonna remove this now. Okay, so now what we've we've built so far is the fact that when a button gets clicked, we can add our to-do list to local storage. But now, if, let's say we wanted to get what's in local storage. Um, Oh, um, so I've got this get from local storage. So again, we're going to have a function. Uh, I'll export it. And the function, let's call it get from local storage because literally I can't think of a better name for it. It's going to go ahead and fetch something from local storage. So I'm going to assign it to a variable. I'll say data, let's call it. And we can say local storage dot get item. Um, maybe I can have a little segue here and discuss um, what's happening when you use dot get item and pass something in to a method. Okay, so a method is a pre-written function for us. So you'll notice these round brackets like this. There's just basically a function that has been pre-written in JavaScript to be able to allow us to perform a function, right? It's a calculator that someone has written for us in JavaScript. And what that calculator takes in is it takes in um, a string and it goes ahead and looks for that string that we pass into that method um, to go and find that in local storage. And the name that we gave to the item that we saved in local storage is list. So we need to go ahead and fetch list. 
I'm going to console.log data. Okay. Um, and I need a call local storage. So go back here. First, we port get from storage. And I'm just going to go ahead and call that. And there you can see I have um, my string that has been stringified. As you'll note, it, like it's not interactive, like I can't click and view the bits of data. And so I basically have to unwind what I did here where I stringified it. I need to unstringify it. Um, and to do that, and create another const, uh, let's say, unstringified data, very long, uh, json dot cars data. And I'm going to log unstringified data to the console. And now what you can see is that it's saying that it's an array. There's an object. You can see that I've got all of the kind of functionality that I would have, that I had before. I stringified it and then I've now unstringified it. Everyone following there? Cool. Drop your chat, drop, drop, drop your questions if there are any. There's like the more questions for me, the better. Um, cool. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of logging it to the console, I'm actually going to return this. So I'm going to return, return unstringified data. So now here I can create a variable. I'll say const uh, data in storage equals get from storage. And we can console log that again. And there, that is working. Um, now, what I want is I want to be able to add it to the page. So I've got this create html.js here. And again, I'm going to have a function. So I'm going to have a function. My calculator, in this case, is going to take in an array. And it is going to add that array to my page. So I'm going to say function. Uh, and I call it create HTML. And it's going to take in data. Um, and I can have it. Um, Uh, what the name of it is to do list. That's fine. Uh, you know what I'm going to call this? I'm going to change it to to do list container, so I don't get confused about my names. Well, how about just to do container? There we are. That's fine. Okay, to do container. We'll check if that is actually an ID. Uh, cool, I'll just change it to an ID. Do you usually create individual JS file for each functionality? So it certainly makes life easier to be able to split up your JavaScript so that uh, you can work on a function and functionality in isolation. Um, that way you don't have things kind of all cluttered and kind of a little bit hard for yourself to read. So the more you can have things to work on in isolation, the better. Otherwise you can often get confused about where is this? What I do find students struggle a little bit with is kind of the, um, the knowing what isn't, isn't available. Um, so that's just one thing to note um, and understanding to get it 
to how the imports work. Cool. Um, create HTML. Import it. Okay, doesn't like that. So I'm just going to move where I select this element. And yep. So what I could just do, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, that's fine. Now this data that I'm passing in, um, okay, so this is the question in the chat. This question isn't related to what you're explaining, but I have a question about question one. I'm struggling to understand what I'm meant to create as a solution to the question. Cool. Uh, like you said, and not immediately what I'm talking about here. So let's just, if we can hold on to that for five minutes, I don't think I have much more to explain on this. Um, and then we can, uh, move on to that. Um, so this is an array. And so an array needs to be looped over. So what I'm going to say is data dot each and for each item run the following function. And add let's have a I'm going to make this into a template literal. And we can have a heading of item.title. And we can have a span with dot date just hope that's fine okay and then i need to pass the data that i have into this function so go back here and instead of console logging data in storage i'm going to pass it into that function And I need to say plus equals here. So there I have gym and dance class. Um, the one thing I need to do next, so if I go ahead and if you see here, let's add swimming, that date. What you see is that it is not creating the HTML. So it's not going to fetch it. So I need to move it inside of this on click. So let's go back here. Otherwise what happens there is that this only runs uh, the once. So what I want is it to add, to run every time. So if I go ahead and click swimming and then dancing. Uh, I need to first clear what's in my HTML. So before I go ahead and run this for each, go ahead and clear what's there. Dancing, singing, groceries. It adds all of those. The one difficulty at the moment is um, I don't know how much more I need to go into in this. How are we feeling about this? So there's a few little bits of things that I need to tie up for the fact that this to-do list, um, it will make an empty array automatically. So what I could do there is I can go ahead and check if there is anything in storage. 
So um, I can go do this if I don't know if I need to go into this more. Um, okay. <coughs> Sorry. How are we feeling about the use of imports, exports there and local storage? Okay, great. I think that's a really good point. I need to recreate this to do a list by myself to fully understand, but this is great. I think that's exactly what you should do. Um, and so here's a great question. Is local storage temporary storage that lives inside your browser? So local storage um, actually, uh, yeah, it lives inside of my browser. Um, but if I had to close this page, close my laptop, come back tomorrow, and I open my laptop, this data should be displaying on the page. Um, it won't be displaying on the page because I haven't actually called uh, this um, uh, create HTML function. I only call it actually in the on click. So I need to move that outside and call that by default when the page loads. So go ahead and get local storage. So I I can do that. I can add that functionality if that's worth uh, doing. Um, uh, yeah, I can do that. If people would like that, I can quickly, maybe, what, maybe what's even, even more valuable is maybe making a new file here and I'm gonna call it uh, to do.html. And I'm going to add a script and do.js. And hopefully this will also kind of help consolidate things. So we'll say to do.js. And what to do.js is going to do is it's going to fetch whatever is in local storage and show it to me. So I just need a place to be able to do that. Class to do list. Okay. And const uh, document. Uh, I mean, const do list equals. Um, and I'm going to um, I'm going to import the get from storage. Uh, import get from storage. I'm just going to do this on the fly, quick, um, but I'll tidy this up const uh, data equals get from storage data dot each uh, item and do list dot plus equals Okay, and then I should really go back to index.html add a link. To do.html, you to do items. Okay, and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just remove the showing of the, um, the items on this page. 
Uh, so I'm gonna change what I've done here and I'll just, we'll just have is the adding. We won't worry about the creating of the HTML for now. Uh, we're just gonna add on this page and view it on the other page. Hopefully that's making sense. I'm just gonna remove those, right? So I've just slightly tweaked it just to speed up things. But what we're going to do is we'll add items on this page. And then if we want to view our list of to-dos, we're going to the next page. Um, so uh, if I go to view to-do items, oh, I've got three errors, great. Uh, ah, forgot to add in that this is type of module. So you can see here, I got that error, which you might see it was blocked due to MIME type because I didn't put that type of module. Oh, no, it's because I haven't actually linked to it properly. There we are. Um, and I have... Right. So you can see that these are different pages. So here I've got a home page. And now if I want data to be available on another page, I can go ahead and click that link. And I can see that it's available on my other page. Um, because it's stored in local storage here. All right. So there you can see how it lives inside of the browser. Um, if I had to close this page and then come back and say open my to-do list again, it would still be there. Okay, uh, the next thing was, uh, you're asking about an error in the console. Uh, this one here about a fav icon, ignore it. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way to be able to hide this. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a way to be able to hide it because it's just looking for a fav icon and I haven't put a fav icon on my computer. I mean, on this page. Um, but yeah, you can just ignore that. But there was a question about question one. I'm actually not familiar with question one. So I'm going to have to... Uh, um go over here if you have question one to hand you're welcome to post it in the chat um Okay, question one, create an object called cat. Give the object one property called complain. Complain's value should be a method, a function which logs the string meow. Okay, so we did touch on um, methods briefly, but let's go over it again. So, um, all right, let's, we can work in, create a new file. Uh, Let's start HTML and uh, we'll link to a script which equals JS methods dot JS and uh, there. Bits.js. Okay. So a method is a function um, inside of an object. So let's create a object. I'll say person. It's name. 
Hold up. Uh, whoops. Um, okay, job. So, and I have says, and what does MJ say? Uh, yeah, I mean, prefer not to just share the answer. Maybe we could chat about the um, kind of what's happening. Um, so it, more important than the answer, because the answer doesn't matter. It, more important is understanding methods. Um, so um, what we can do is we can say, I'll say something. So I'll um, says, and let's say, time of day uh, and name. Okay, so it takes in those two variables. And I will console.log um, and we can have a string here. We'll say good time of day name. Maybe it's confusing for this to have name. So uh, uh, let's say. Uh, friend okay or have a friend name okay so if we um let's say you know what actually i'm not going to have this console log i'm just going to have this return So I'm going to console log person. Now, when you're working with objects, you need to use dot notation to be able to access properties. So if I wanted to be able to access person dot the person's name, I say person dot name. If I want to access, say the job dot job. If I wanted to be able to access the says function, I could say dot says. Now, what happens here is it actually returns the function itself doesn't actually return um, any information here. If I wanted to return information, so if I, again, we can think about our calculator, right? So our, our calculator that we've written takes in a time of the day and the friend's name, and it performs an operation. What it does is it returns a string that's um, added good, whatever the time of day is and whatever the name of the friend is. So I can say person dot says, and now I pass it in. So remember how we talked about, uh, say JSON dot stringify as an example, local storage dot set item. You can see here I'm passing in two values into that function. So here I can say person dot says, and uh, morning. Sally, and now you can see it says, good morning, Sally. Maybe I'll add an exclamation mark to be extra friendly. Does that make sense now about how, uh, what methods are? So methods are properties of a function. I mean, properties of an object that are a function. We could also have other properties here, right? Alive. Thank goodness. Um, what's an array about me? Um, hobbies. Uh, let's say uh, coding, right? And we can access all of these. So we can say person dot hobbies. But you can see that returns an array. If I wanted to get the first item inside of that array, square brackets, zero, and I get coding. All right, is there any more questions there, guys? Please shoot.
give you a few seconds. I hope that was all useful. Um, but yeah, now's your chance if you want um, me to speak about something. Okay, Oliver says he's still confused about question one. Okay. Is it the name method? Would pro function property maybe be a bit easier? So, um, so you have this object. So an object is a thing that exists. Okay. Um, and a method is a function that is a property of that. So you can so if an object can have lots of different properties, it can have strings, it can have booleans, it can have arrays, and one of them is a function. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to be able to run a function that is specific to that object. So um, uh, let's say um, I'm trying to think of better examples, but the essentially it's a property of the function and that property happens to be, sorry, it's a property of the object and that property just happens to be a function, but it's called a method. I don't know why it's called a method, but that's what it's called. Um, so basically what you want um, is to be able to put things into this function so that I could say different things here, right? So I could say, it says, and say morning, Sally. But because our function or calculator can do different things, I could say evening, Bob, uh, afternoon. Each time it runs with my different, um, uh, the different values that I've passed in. Okay. I'm struggling to use find or filter inside a function then to loop through the array of objects that is passed as the arguments of the function. I only get the unknown of the property when I assign it to inner HTML. It works fine with the regular for loops, but not array prototype methods. I might need to, you might need to send me your code there to be able to see a bit easier kind of what's happening. Um, but again, uh, find and filter are, are examples of methods um, and they perform an operation. And what they do is, uh, so find, finds the first item in an array that matches. I'm, I'm not thinking that your question is asking for an explanation of find or filter, but just to explain for other people. Um, that will find will find the first item that matches a uh, criteria that you've passed in and a filter will find all of the items in an array that match uh, the criteria that you've passed in. Cool. Um, Basically, question eight. So in question eight, I'd probably use a conditional statement um, about whether or not it gets added to the page. But you could theoretically use a filter on that. But yeah, I think a conditional statement for question eight um, is probably the way to go because you don't really need to create a new array. You just need to not, um, you just need to not add something to the page if it doesn't meet your certain criteria. Um, cool. So then there's, um, would this be a function? Uh, const cat equals. So, cool. Um, 
So a function, and I'm going to call it, say, add numbers. Add numbers takes in num one, num two, and total equals num one plus num two. Okay, that's a function. Okay, so um, this is a function that's been created. Um, do you agree? Uh, whereas what this is, console.log, is we have an object. The object is the console. We're looking for a property of the console called dot .log. Um, and dot .log happens to be a method. So it's a function of this object. So we say dot log, and then we pass something into that function. Hello. So object dot, because we're accessing a property of this object, um, the property of that object happens to be a function, and we pass that in. What we're asking for is um, Let's say we, and then we can have a const uh, maths. And we can have uh, add, and we have add numbers. Maybe I can just have this uh, inside of my function here. It might just be an easier way to be able to see it instead of. Ah. Oh. Right, we could have multiple functions for this maths object. So we could have uh, minus, and we add another function to be minus numbers. I'm just going to have it return. Turn total. Okay, so let's have a look at that quickly. What's happening there? Console log maths. You can see I have an object. And it has a key value pair here. Um, and there is add and minus. Uh, if I had to go here and let's say console.log console. So speaking about how the console was an object. So you can see it has the curly braces. So there's my object that I've created in curly braces. And here you can see uh, the console has the same. And the console has a cert, clear, count, debug, der, log. That's probably the one you were most familiar with. Um, and here we have the same thing kind of happening um, with our function. You can see there's a function name. Uh, if we look here, there's a name as well. Um, so essentially, JavaScript has pre-written functions for us. But if we want to be able to add our own function to an object, then we can. And that's called method. So I can say here, console.log maths dot add numbers. And ten comma two. Get back 
Not spotting it. But um, is there any other questions there? Drop me a message. I'll hold on for. So I actually want to do it this way. Oh, I have set the name states because I got all muddled. Let's do it now. It's called add. Happy now? There we are. Okay, there's a next question here. How do you do a function where you pass in a value or replace a value? So that's what a function does. It takes in values and does something with them. If you want to replace, say like the inner HTML of an element on the DOM, then you can do that. Um, but essentially a function is just taking in information, doing something with it, and then um, uh, finishing. <laughs> so it just takes in information and does something with it. So you say to the function, what are you taking in? And you tell it what functionality you want it to have. Does that make sense? So let's go back to the basics here. Function. Um, and let's say we wanted to so we get get tax, right? So we wanted to know we've got a products list and we wanted to be able to know the tax on it. So let's say get tax. And it takes in a number. And we've got a total, or let's just say tax equals number times 0.3. Let's say you pay 30% tax on something. Console.log tax. Now, when I call this function, let's say, let's say 100. Um, we get back the fact that it is 30. But we can call this function as many times as we want with different values. 500, whatever, right? And each time those run and give me a different value of the tax. But what's important is that the function is reusable and the fact that we understand that there are parameters. So those are the variable name for that function and the value gets set when we call that function. Does that make sense? So here I'm passing in the value. So when I call that function, I set the value of whatever number is. So the value of number never gets stored inside of my function, only when it gets called. Um, anything else there? Cool. Well, Oliver, if you're still stuck, uh, drop me a message on Discord and we can carry on the chat there. Um, anyway, I hope that's been a helpful session, guys. And um, yeah, let me know how you're getting on. Uh, JavaScript 1 is... 
naturally a bit of a step up for you. Um, it's kind of, you're getting to like the proper programming now. Um, so if you're finding it a little bit tough, uh, it's natural uh, that you find it tough because it is the harder bit. Um, and it's kind of the kind of key foundations. So if you're not understanding something, then you really do need to message us so that we can make sure that you're on track there. All right. Well, thanks a lot for uh, joining the session. Um, I will post the video um, and please do go ahead and try these things. What I can't emphasize enough is playing around. Um, go find tutorial, not tutorials, but there's like, if you search like JavaScript questions or something, there's like huge amounts of like kind of things to create, make a calendar or make a uh, modal, something like that. Those little tutorials, great. The, the best way to learn how to code is coding. So um, I encourage you to do as much coding as you can. Um, but cool, guys. I hope you have a nice Friday and a good weekend ahead. All right. Bye.